Hi everyone, welcome back to our uh, studio. We're continuing on with our rose challenge, rose number 16. So we're just starting a little bit past halfway now, okay? A lot of this stuff that I wanted, to, and, and some of you are making fantastic comments, both in our artist network and over on YouTube, about you're seeing the need for that repetition. You're seeing the need to preserve that movement within the flower. So you're getting it, and that's great. And it, and it just takes time. It just takes time and it just takes practice. Towards the end of this series, I'm going to bring in some roses that I did 10, 15 years ago. And you're going to be surprised at the difference between that what I have made and even the jumps I've made in the last year. Though There's quite a few of my students that are painting the challenge along with this that have been painting for years with me. And they are telling me, I'm seeing a lot of jump in what you're doing. More than anything else in what we paint, more than anything else, it is confidence, okay? You must have confidence. And like I said at the very beginning, you know, when I used to study with a lot of the masters, they would always say, and I studied and read the masters from not only the Dutch golden age of the 17th century, all the way up to the impressionists of the 19th and 20th century. They, all of them say basically the same thing, that it's better to make a, a stroke that is wrong with confidence than it is to play with it until you get it perfect because that makes it stiff and unnatural, okay? So confidence, confidence to put that color on and leave it right where it is. And sometimes you think, oh my gosh, that's wrong. But somebody else looking at it doesn't know that. And so it's the confidence to just leave it because no one else is gonna say, oh, that's wrong because they don't know it's wrong. Okay, all right, so let's continue on. Same board, type of board, this time a little bit more gray. Uh, like I've told some of you before, I make all different kinds of colors. This one, you know, like a board I'll use here and another one, um, has a little bit more yellow oxide in it, so it's a little bit warmer. So I change the backgrounds a little bit. This one has a little bit heavier on the black and white uh, kinds of grays. Three quarter inch fusion brush, same type of palette here, Hansa, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphthol red light, pine green, fatal blue, quinacridone violet, red violet, black and white. And uh, you know, I have a little cap of extender right here uh, to add to some stuff if I want to. Big old stack of paper towels right here. I keep a big old stack of them right there. And uh, we're off to the races here, okay? Let's go, let's go return back towards our peach roses a little bit and we'll play some uh, differences with them. You know, usually when I do peach roses and stuff, I will uh, put some of my blue or the violets. I usually, like if I'm, if I'm putting some kind of color into the background, a really good thing to remember is, you know, reach over to your color theory and grab some of the complements, something that's off to the complements. And if I'm gonna go, you know, real light colors and stuff to it, uh, sometimes I will go a little darker value. I look for the contrast. There's all kinds, I'll put a little extender in this here too. So I took a little phthalo blue, a little quinacridone violet, some white, make myself a nice light color. This should probably be just a little bit, yeah, just right about the same, just a little bit lighter, uh, but so it'll dry down to about that, so it'll be soft. If I'm going to face a rose up this way, I'm going to put some streaks this time because you've been seeing me do a lot this way. I'm going to put some streaks this time this way. Now, this is what the Dutch masters in the Golden Age used to always tell us to do. This is what we call in design-wise of, of designing florals. They were the very best at designing florals. Um, this is what they call St. Andrew's Cross. And so they would design it so that when they made color movements or crossing of florals, that they cross. It's kind of like X, you know, X marks the spot of where you're going to put something. So you may have a background movement this way and a rose movement this way that puts in what we call St. Andrew's Cross. Now I can come in here and set a light source to that as well. I can model it too. Don't always have to have the streaks. You can model it around like this a little bit here, you model that around, streak it up there. But if you leave a little bit of the power of that streak right through like that, that is what the Dutch say, you get the very best interest. And of course, they were the masters of setting up floral compositions. They had entire rules for setting up compositions. Um, and I was lucky enough to get their entire, uh, what they call the big book of secrets many years ago, 700 pages of their, their secrets from the 17th century of designing florals and landscapes and all that kind of stuff. 
but we're practicing roses. Okay, so I'll put a little bit of that in like that. Now, peach colors. Now, peach is really just basic versions of uh, orange and stuff. So, you know, one of my favorite, if, if I make it soft, I will make it from my yellow oxide, and I'd like to use the quinacridone, those together. This makes nice, soft peaches. You add and uh, you add a little bit of the white to it, you get a nice soft peach color. You can put it more violet, which will cool it. You can put it more yellow, which will warm it. If you want it brighter, you can always go uh, quinacridone and Hansa yellow. This makes it a little bit of a brighter type of a peach color. There's a little more glow to the yellowish undertones here than there is with that one there. So, and you have a version. And if you don't know, you just mix them all together, model it all together. It makes great colors. Let's push this out. And I'm going to do this while it's a little bit wet because they're complements here. And these complements give you the lost. So I'm just going to work this into the background, kind of into the rounding shape of the idea of where I want that uh, particular rose there. Let's, um, Let's put a soft one right off to this side over here this time. We could put blossoms, we can put anything, but remember, you know, with this, we're painting 30 rose compositions. We're gonna repeat some of them around. We're practicing the application in the, of the roses more than anything else. So, and you can take some of this back. You can just model some back here just for pure color. This strikes of pure color. This doesn't need to be a rose, it can be just, you know, the colors that you would see back through your composition and stuff like that, okay? All right, what's the next step? So if I decide this is my queen, this is the one that's gonna, you know, following the Dutch philosophy, this is my queen, this is the one that's gonna, um, you know, is gonna control my composition, I'll come in and I'll set the cool color here. And uh, let's give myself a little bit more working room here. We'll just push some of this blue right off to the side here. A little bit of blue next to that peach is fine because there will be compliments, but we'll push that off to the side. If you really want it clean, you just say this is a nice thing I like about heritage. Really like it clean, just dip it into a little water and pull down like that, and you clean that right off immediately. Saves your palette paper. Don't need to go, you know, run off and taking off all kinds of different, tearing off sheets of palette paper. All right, <clears throat> so let's come over here. Let's take our violet, let's start here. Come down about a third of the way, put your nice deep, that's your center part of your of your flower here. Now we can go to the more contrasting red violet, but let's start here first, okay? And then we lift up and come around and come around and come around like this, around and around and around. As it gets to this outside, just push that around a little bit. Here you want the movement inside there, but you don't need the sharp edges back here because the sharp edges brings the rows forward. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of extender in here just for moisture. You could use water. Okay, I'm going to take some more of my red of my quinacridone. Let's come up about a third from that circle and let's put in the, the bottom of the bowl and let's just push that right into shape there. Sometimes when I have the line out here, I'll assist myself by pushing in and out. That starts your reaching petals of it. And I determine how much contrast I want this to have. I'm going to go with a little bit of that red violet. You can see that red violet's a little darker. It'll have more contrast. I'll keep that right down in here. So we'll do that and we'll keep that contrast right down here. Tap that around a little bit. Put in some nice movement. Let's Soften this just a bit. So now you can use extender out like that. You can also take your fingers with some dirty water from previous baitings and just put some water out here and touch that. And uh, so it'll stay wet. Let's uh, push this one here and a little bit of the shadow side like that. You can take just a bit of that damp water on your finger like this and it pushes really easy. See how soft and easy that pushes that bottom of that? If I want to soften out like this color here, I don't worry about blending. I just take a little bit of water onto my finger and push it like that. And that will do that. Sometimes I take my finger and draw it across the edge to start that front lip of the, of the rose. I do all kinds of stuff. And that, as, as you paint more, and, and work more flowers like this and roses like this, you'll start playing and relaxing and start creating your own 
just by painting faster and more casual you create different looks so I want a little bit of this color to show up back in here give you the idea of other roses okay all right let's go back to a brighter peach and uh, we'll put a little bit of Hansa and a little quinacridone a little white here nice nice bright light color here strike that across the front of this you can take a little bit of water if it all feels dry take a little bit of water and you can I'll show you you can even um, and it's funny I laugh because I do things like this I even just put a little bit of that color onto my finger like this to preserve it coming down and just a couple of times see there and you get this beautiful look of that color so I have a heavy edge here and a softer little bit of color I can come in with more petals so you know, like one of the comments on the on the video was, you give the whole new world meaning to to uh, finger painting. Well, yeah, it does. You know, I I was uh, a very structured stroke artist for many many years, for over twenty years before I started getting more casual and trying other styles, and um, I used my finger, started painting with my finger a lot to break the the stiffness of the brush and start look at, starting to teach myself to look at different things different ways. I'll push this up and around here like that into the bowl. Remember we got to find a bowl. Now it's a little dry back there and question is do I want that to recede? If I want that to recede a little bit more, blend it out a little bit more, just tap into a little water and push the edge. Just push the edge. That's why I love the acrylics. I'll push the edge there and you've just blended it right out. Now we have this nice focused area here let's get a little bit lighter a little smaller sometimes i'll change the hue i'll put a put a little bit of a yellow a little bit more hansa hansa yellow into it here change the hue let's make a little brighter smaller pull down to the bowl here push in to the bowl touch into a little water if you needed to cool that edge just a touch here so if we if we're coming down over here, we cool that edge just a bit. Here, push that in. Don't lose that nice movement. Okay, now I can set, start setting up some real light petals up here into the front here. Let's come off here to the side, pull in towards the bowl, two or three strokes, depending on the size of your rose. Now I'm gonna incorporate that right there. I can push to shear or tap into just a little bit of water to assist it. And it'll look just like you blended it there. Okay. You could use your brush as well, like I've said before. Right? And I'm going to repeat myself 30 times in 30 different videos. 30 times in 30 different videos. So you'll hear all of this about 900 times. And hopefully, it by the time we're on our 30th video, it'll start breaking some of your habits. And you'll start painting your own roses. Okay, so let's take a little water and a little bit of this, maybe a little cooler. Let's just develop a little bit, a little higher back here to this rose. I'll show you a little different. Push to have some of the blue come through. That's what's going to make your translucency on your, on your rose here. Okay, and at any time I decide to change something on rose, I can take my bit of quinacridone here. I can reset my center walk that up and change the uh, the look of the rose again that center you know like I've said so much especially in the last couple of videos the center is what really makes that a beautiful rose so <clears throat> don't be afraid to reset it you know and uh, and redo things retouch colors casual things don't be afraid you know to do that kind of stuff okay let's keep going let's lighten up here a little bit more yellow warmth so warm and cool warm and cool I'm a warm and cool painter let's go lighter and warmer strike across the front of this rose put in some petals here like this pull down kind of leave the movement there strike an edge let's pull some in a little bit more white here strike that edge Right there, pull in. That's kind of pretty. Let's pull some out here. Nice big light one right there. Push that right into the bowl. 
There's a nice light petal. Let's cool it down. A little water or a little extender here. Cool it down coming over to this side. Push that around like that. Leave this kind of lost. Doesn't need to be perfect over there. Leave it kind of lost. Let's take some of this light. Just kind of tap it around. Get that movement. That movement right there. That's good. Um, take a little bit more light and cool here. Let's come in and put in just a, a bit more of a structured petal. So I'm going to leave the edge so it's not quite so lost. And, you know, that's an artist's choice. That's not like this is how you paint the rose. That's an artist's choice. Let's go back over to our warmer yellows and some more light color. Let's really get it light, almost up to our 10, almost up to pure white here. Let's strike that right across the front here. Push that down in, let some of that movement take over. A nice warm, cool movement there. I like that kind of stuff. And uh, drop some edges of some petals in like this, up underneath the bowl. If you want, if you go too far, just take some of your bowl shadow color and take some of it back out. Leave some of that nice movement here. Let's pull some edges out here a little bit more. There, like that. Okay. That's going pretty good. Let's pop a few light colors right out here. That helps the, the width of the rose there. Okay. Just the ideas of it. Maybe an idea of a petal right here. And just pull down just a bit to incorporate that. So you see that? Okay. Um, that works pretty well. And get some of this cooler color. Let's come in here and draw down just a few little petals coming around. This time rounding down like that. Maybe a bit of an edge over on this side so it rounds down a little different. And like I say, I'll put it in there and start looking at that, you know, the edges and the movements and stuff. And if I want to change something, it's really easy to change and redirect that center. So sometimes after I work that a little bit, I might take my center color, that quinacridone, and reshape the center movement here just a bit. Maybe a bit of that red violet in there as well. So I get a nice contrast and reshape that movement, that rounding movement here. See, just a bit of that. Makes a pretty rose just like that, see? Okay, let's take some light color and just plow onto the front of this rose, soften it down here by the bowl. Just some nice light, a little different, not quite as structured right here. Just plow on some color. Let's plow on some light here, right in here like this. Just some nice light, a little different. Take some of our cool color, reset that bowl right in there, like that. Lift out, there, just like that. And you know, of course, you know, like I say, you can do anything you want. I'm gonna reset some of this light front right up here. Pull down that way, reshape that just a bit. So that makes a nice, so it's not quite as structured, you know, as I could have a more structured edge like to a petal right here, pulling down into that bowl here. But you don't wanna do every one exactly the same. We're rose painters, so, you know, we want some variety. So sometimes I paint them with hardly any kinds of petals. They're more impressionistic. Uh, don't have a lot of strokes to them. And sometimes I paint them with a lot of strokes. So it's uh, like this bowl here. So sometimes I'll paint petals with a lot of strokes. And then sometimes I'll paint them very, very soft where they don't have a whole lot of strokes. So, you know, I like the variety of it. Now let's go back down to our softer yellow oxide a little bit of our quinacridone and some white here. Lighten that up, let's strike across. We'll make a softer, quick, little peach colored rose here. A little bit different. Set some petals out like that. 
This is where I like the roses the best when I start to work at this speed because I don't make perfect strokes, but I make confident strokes, see? And I'm looking for that roundness of that bowl. I'll push into that roundness of that bowl. I might take some of this up and around and open this rose up just a bit here, like that, okay? And I'll watch my collision of the two, which were light petals go and so on and so forth, and I'll make a little bit more of an edge down here, a little lighter, a little bit more of an edge down here, a little bit, like that, and leave that. Maybe take that nice big boulder light, but not as light and warm as that, and strike right across here, like that. So that one's a little different. Push that right into the shape of that bowl, right there. And more than anything else, I'll look for some of this movement. Let me show you. So I'll put some movement out around here like this. Yeah, maybe that's nice. Uh, maybe put a pedal right out here like this and push that so it gets some of that blue through it so it becomes a little bit more transparent there. So I have a nice opaque edge and a nice transparent edge. And then I'll reset the rose here with some of my inside color. That is what I find really makes the rose here. I'll reset the feeling of this rose here like that with this quinacridone here like that. So you see it's a softer little rose that way. So you play those colors. And maybe now with these other ones here, I'll just take a little extender and I'll just drop some of this color. I'm not going to paint roses. I'm just going to put some of these colors back in here like this. Okay. Now, you know, how much do I leave up here? How much do I, you know, do I add more petals up in here or reset any of that movement? So you can get really change your rows around quite a bit by resetting that movement or resetting the contrast that's right down here, you know, onto the bottom of the rows here. You can set a lot of that. That's up to you. And we'll preserve some of that bowl movement there. That looks kind of nice. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of my green, a little burnt sienna. We can do some negative painting up in here. You could step off to the edge. You just drop that off there like that. You could step off to the uh, off the edge. For example, if I want to make this rose out here look a little bit more transparent, I'm going to even add to soften this green out, add a little bit of that peach color. But I'll step out to here like this and do some negative painting like that. And I need to get my water going here. What that'll do is uh, give you the look of that translucency to the back there of your, uh, you know, of your rose. And so you can you control that. You control that by, you know, how much or how much of an edge you leave there. I might come out here and draw that in just a bit. Let's get that a little more yellow green here. So a little bit of pine green and some yellow, maybe a bit of light here. Come out like that. There, okay. Let's put a little deep mark of it right down in here. A little bit of contrast coming up. And see, I can small down this petal for right now. I might put the rose back on top, but if I push that like that, I get that nice green coming into the peach and get that translucency in there, you know, that um, I like to have. I can bring it back out, set it back out with just by restating this petal again, but leaving a little bit of that greenness in there and see what that does. Let's put the edge on this one here. See, that gives you that nice translucency back through there, through those rose petals. So it's a lot of fun to try different things. Let's just drop a bit of this out here, a bit more of this coming out this way here. So a little bit more of a composition, it means you got to work a little bit faster, you know, trying to put some of this together. The whole purpose of everything we do here is to get you to work fast, 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 and concentrate on, you know, making a, a confident stroke as opposed to a precision stroke. We want confidence that you're painting with confidence and take some of that off. You know, that is what uh, gives you your beauty to your paintings, the confidence. You know, there were, and it was a number of years before I could actually accept and believe that. So some of you may not believe me, but uh, it is very, very true. 
and artists have been saying that for hundreds of years. And so, here we go. Put some, put some more distinct uh, shapes for your leaves. I like a few of those, especially if I'm doing a lot of casualness, you know, into the painting. I like a few leaves to come through a little bit more uh, precision to their shapes and draw a touch more of the idea of stems and stuff coming down and through. Don't put it through your flower there, Dave. And uh, a little bit of movement back through there. They're fun. They're fun. They're really, really fun. And try. Move, move, move. Try some different colors. Now, and, and this is where you sit there and you go, okay, do you want to have more edges? Do you, you know, do you like the soft edges of the rose there? Do you want to put some more out? My, my point to you is, so she painted along with all these. We're going to do them all. I don't want you to do them all the same. So I want you to try some other things. But if I want to make a more clear edge, I load up my cool a little bit care more careful, and I can make this edge of this rose here even a little bit more pretty. But I don't want to do that all the time because casual sells, you know, casual, casual paintings sell uh, very well for me as a production painter, as a professional artist. They sell very, very well for me. And, um, you know, they, uh, I'll show you some in the next few videos and stuff. I'll show you some of the paintings I do, paintings I do for sale. But, uh, you know, they, not having things perfect sell better for me than when I make it too perfect, okay? So you have some differences here and some ideas. And you can just, but most of what I'm looking at in all of this, see what I'm doing? What am I thinking when I'm doing this? I'm thinking about the movement of this flower. You know, the movement of this rose here. That's what I'm painting. That's what I'm doing. You know, how is this petal moving in the shape of the this rose? And the thing is, that center and the bowl right here, the bowl is what really makes that rose. So that real pretty turning bowl there. See, that's what really makes that uh, a pretty rose. And make sure you grab some of that color goes back up into these right up here as well. Lots of different ways, right? Lots of different ways. And, uh, you know, like I said, I have probably between 20 and 30 techniques I use on roses, depending on the style and the time period and the look that I'm painting. I have between 20 and 30 specific techniques that I use to achieve different looks. And uh, we'll explore a few of those in this. But I want... In this entire series, I want to practice with you movement more than anything else. The movement of the rose. So that you can see petals. And then you just come back and add the tips of the petals to make a rose more what you want. Okay? So, 28. A little under 28 minutes. And that still has that one. Got that done. You know, a little bit of talking along the way. Okay? So, rose number 16, there you go. Painting from the yellows, it warms and cools into the peaches. Um, give it a try. Put some of that blue back there like that. Let that counter. Like I showed you in some of the other things, those of you who studying color theory and everything with me, you know, take some of that blue, and maybe I'll show you here real quick. You know, one of the greatest things we do as an artist is to call the harmony of the color. Take some of that blue from your background that we pushed up over here to the side, and add that as a light little touch right over here into that rose. This is the harmony of it. And just a little bit of it. What that does is moves the background from the back to the front here, and it anchors, but we keep it on the shadow side. We call this the moon glow. Keep that onto the shadow side. Add a few little touches of that into your roses there. And it enhances their beauty by adding just a little bit more color kinds of stuff that we're going to have fun with, okay? All right, so if you like it, please take it just a moment, click like on the video because that helps the distribution of, the, of our videos out across the internet. They do it all off of what's called analytics. The more comments we get, the more likes we get, the more videos, uh, the more the reach the video has. So if you want to help us out, please click like. Take a couple seconds, write a nice comment or something on there, and uh, I'll see you on rose number 17.